Moines Register Political Soapbox. I'm Carol Hunter, News Director at the Register. Just a little bit about uh, how we work the soapbox. Each speaker will get 20 minutes. They can elect to do Q&A. They can just speak the whole time. They can cut off early. It's 20 minutes and they get to use it however they want to use it. We would ask for decorum here at the soapbox. Um, we believe in civil discourse. Uh, please let each speaker have their say and uh, raise your signs before. Uh, raise them as the speaker leaves, but please keep them lower during the speech so that those behind you can hear the speaker. Uh, another tradition here at the State Fair is that the Star Spangled Banner is sung every morning, uh, usually at 10 o'clock. That will happen today. So uh, please, obviously, let's honor our country as that is being sung. There are flags across the top of the grandstand. Um, as soon as that's over, we do know that Ms. Wasserman Schultz is here on the ground, so we'll start Debbie as Wasserman soon as the Star Spangled Banner is the Thank you. chairwoman of the Democratic National Committee. Okay. This is Occupier Caitlin coming to you live from the Des Moines Register Soapbox at the Iowa State Fair. Uh, in a few minutes uh, after the National Anthem, Debbie Wasserman Schultz will take the stage for her 20-minute block. The box on for that? Did anybody get that? And then... I got it earlier, but I didn't get that. The two Republican candidates, uh, Bob Jindal and Chris Christie, but I, I think Christie first and Jindal. And then after that will be... I can't think of the name right now, but a former commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service, the U.S. Uh, tax grabber. This place is filling up. People who are for these the candidates or this, these speakers or against them, there will no doubt be a little bit of protest. I heard some earlier, I shot some pictures. Some people over there holding signs, as you can see that. So the weather is good right now. Not we used to be known for state fair heat, but we're not baking like a potato right now. So in a few minutes, this thing will get going. The Iowa State Fair has been a long and treasured tradition of the state of Iowa. Help us continue our tradition in honoring our country as we begin our day. Please join us as we honor the United States of America in That is coming over this the our main PA system of the Serena fairgrounds. Ritter, winner of the Des Moines Register, oh, say, can you sing National Anthem Contest? She'll be piped Whoa. through the speakers, the sound system. Standing in another building, and it was piped throughout the fairgrounds. So, and first up will be Democratic National.
Committee Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Occupy Domain protested her before the Iowa caucuses in uh, 2011 and, uh, or 2012 with uh, a die-in at the Savior Hotel where she was staying at the time, and I participated in that. There's a lot of press here. Soapbox. I'm Carol Hunter, News Director of the Register. Our first speaker of the morning is Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who is Chair of the Democratic National Committee. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Wasserman Schultz uh, was first elected to the House and Senate in Florida in 2004. She was elected to the U.S. House. She continues to represent her district in Southern Florida today. In 2011, she was elected Chair of the Democratic National Committee. Second in okay second woman yeah. in in that capacity she's visited iowa often and in fact this is her third visit to the des moines register political soapbox so join me in welcoming her back Yay, yeah. thank you so much hello iowa yeah. i am so glad i'm so proud to be back at the soapbox at the iowa state fair uh, this is my third opportunity as carol mentioned to be up here on the stage at the, at the Des Moines Register Soapbox. And this is such an important opportunity to really talk about the choices that we have in front of us over the next 15, 16 months. And what I do every year is this, this fair is one of the best fairs in America. And I know Iowans clearly believe it's the best fair. Every single time I've come, I've brought one of my kids. I have my third third child with me. It was her turn this year, and we spent the afternoon at the fair yesterday, and it was an absolutely incredible time. I can't begin to describe to you the amount of fried food that we <laughs> ate on a stick, which is something we look forward to every year. I can tell you that my son, in, in advising my daughter that she should definitely come with me this year, said, Rebecca, you should go because not gonna lie, it was my best food day ever. <laughs> In his 15 years at the time, that was saying a lot. So again, I'm so glad to be here because uh, there's a little bit going on in uh, the political world today and you've had an opportunity to hear from a number of candidates. I have the privilege of talking with you about the very clear contrast and the two choices that we have to be able to make in America over the next year or so during the course of this presidential campaign. We are at a crossroads in America. We have had Republicans who you've heard from, who have time and time again said, you know what, the best thing to do is not to go forwards, but to go backwards. Let's go back to the failed trickle-down economic policies of the past, those policies that say, we should focus on cutting taxes for the wealthiest, most fortunate Americans. Instead of Democrats who believe that we should focus on helping people reach the middle class. Yes. As a mom with three young kids, as a member of Congress, the lens through which I look is what are our policy choices going to mean for their adult life? What kind of America are they going to grow up in? I want them to grow up in an America that gives them a fair shot to get ahead that makes sure that everybody has an opportunity to succeed, not just the people who are already successful. And that's what Republicans have been focused on. You, you can see consistently that whether it's Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, John Kasich, uh, there's so many of them, it's hard to remember them all, Donald Trump, they think that it's a really good idea to protect people at the top. And, and if you take a deeper dive into the policy positions that they've taken, they are really not only not supportive of helping move America forward, but they, they really want to take us backwards. They, they almost seem like they are focused on making sure that people 
have a harder time getting ahead. And I'll give you several examples. Let's talk equal pay. Let's talk about it. Democrats believe in equal pay for equal work. It is unacceptable in America today that women still only earn 78 cents for every dollar a man earns. Does anyone think that here in this crowd that that's okay, that we should just leave that status quo in place? Or should women earn equal pay for equal work? I have two daughters. I want to make sure that when they're adults, they get paid the same for doing the same work as a man does in the same job. It is unacceptable in America today that African American women and Latina women earn even less. African American women today earn 64 cents for every dollar that a man does doing the same job. And Latina women earn 56 cents in the same situation. That's an unacceptable policy. And what do Republicans, how do Republicans respond? They respond like Scott Walker did. As governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker actually signed legislation to repeal equal pay enforcement in Wisconsin. Rick Perry vetoed equal pay legislation, as did Chris Christie. Marco Rubio suggested that making sure that we can enforce federal law, the Equal Pay Act, was wasting time. Well, I'll tell you as a woman and as a mother of two daughters and as a representative of thousands of constituents of my own in South Florida, I believe that we need to make sure that we fight not only to support equal pay, but to enforce it. And that is what every one of our presidential candidates believes. Let's talk about health care. You see, the important thing for us to focus on over the course of the next year and a half is what is the contrast? What are the choices that we have? Which candidate for President of the United States is going to be supportive of the cornerstones of a middle class life? What are those? That includes making sure that you have a good roof over your head and make sure that you have access, you maintain access to quality, affordable health care. It, it means making sure that you get a good education, that you have a secure retirement. Those are all cornerstones of a middle class life. And let's look at the Republican record. The Republican record on all of those things, as soon as the Republicans took the majority after the 2010 election, they passed legislation in the first hundred days that, repeal, that attempted to repeal all of President Obama's efforts to ensure that people could remain in their homes. When President Obama took office, we were losing 750,000 jobs a month. And now you fast forward to today and we've had 65 straight months of job growth in the private sector. More than five full years of job growth. The last several months have seen more than 200,000 jobs created. And that's the kind of progress that we want to continue to see. But not under a Republican presidency. We wouldn't see that under a Republican presidency because they don't support making sure that people can keep a roof over their head. Every candidate for a president right on the Republican the the side has as a top priority to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Democratic Party debates. That the 16 million Americans who have gained access to health care coverage would lose it. It means that young adults who can stay on their parents' insurance now until they're 26 years old would no longer be able to. What it means is that the 129 million Americans, like I am, who live in this country with a pre existing condition, I'm a breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with breast cancer at 41 years old, seven and a half years ago. And you know, besides that horrible feeling of not knowing whether you're going to be able to see your children grow up. The second fear you have as a breast cancer patient is when is the other shoe going to drop? This was before the Affordable Care Act. When is the other shoe going to drop? Is an insurance company going to drop my coverage or deny me coverage because I have a pre-existing condition? No one should face medical bankruptcy. No one should have to fight not only for their life, but also for their health care coverage. That's unacceptable, and every single candidate for president on the Republican side will take, about, take us back to that dark place. We're not going back, are we? We're not going back. We're going to continue to move forward. You know, the Republicans the last few weeks have not had such a fun time, have they? 
<laughs> if you, uh, it's been really interesting among the 18 Republican candidates for president. Uh, if, if, if Republicans think that things have gone well, they need only to take a look at Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush actually said a few days ago that we are spending too much on women's health care. How many women in this crowd think that we're already spending too much and that we should spend less making sure that women can stay healthy? Is there any hands in the air that we're spending too much? Well, I know that the women that I know, not only in my district, but all across America, want to make sure that they can stay healthy because it's not just a women's issue to make sure that women can remain healthy. It's a family issue and an economic issue. The reason that it's an economic issue is that 40% of women, 40% of households with children are headed by a woman and a woman who's working. If women are not able to remain healthy, if they're not able to get that basic access to healthcare, if they're not able to make their own reproductive choices and plan their families, then that affects their ability to support their families in a very significant way. So let's take a look at where the Republicans are on women's access to health care. Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush supports repealing the Affordable Care Act. He supports making sure that women can't get access to health care that allows them to make their own reproductive choices. Marco Rubio has the same opinion as Todd Aiken. He supports a ban on abortion in all cases, even in the case of rape or incest. Rape or incest. That is not where America is. Where America is, is that women should have access to health care. I want to close on retirement security because there's a very clear contrast between where Republicans and Democrats are on a secure retirement. We just celebrated, we just celebrated 50 years, 50 years of Medicare and 50 years of Medicaid and 80 years of Social Security. Those programs ensure that if you work hard throughout your life, if you play by the rules, when you retire, you're not going to have to worry about falling through the floor. You're going to have a floor that's going to support you, that's going to ensure that you can feed your family, that's going to ensure that you can keep that roof over your head, that you're not going to have to choose between medicine and meals. Democrats passed Social Security and Medicare, support strengthening Social Security and Medicare, and have strengthened them. And Republicans, Republicans like Jeb Bush, they believe that we should privatize Social Security. Jeb Bush supported his brother's plan to privatize Social Security. You remember how well that debate went. That went down in a ball of flames because Americans support Social Security. Americans support Medicare. But, but Jeb Bush said the other day that we should phase out Medicare. Does anyone here think that Medicare should be phased out as soon as shouldn't be entitled to making sure Medicare that they have a strong health care and that they don't have to worry about it. We need to make sure that we have a candidate for president who focuses on making sure that we have all of the cornerstones in place of a middle class life. It is our Democratic candidates for president that will ensure that. And finally, finally, I know I said finally once already. But really, finally, let's take a look at the, uh, at the first Republican debate. At the first Republican debate, which was held on the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, I thought it was appalling. Well, there were a lot of things appalling, including the misogynistic comments of Donald Trump and the fact that none of the Republican candidates on that stage called him out on any of those misogynistic comments. But could you, I couldn't believe that not a single candidate on the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act actually suggested that we may want to expand access to voting rights. There was no mention on that stage of support for increasing people's access to the polls. Why? Because once Republicans began taking over the state legislatures and governor's mansions, what did they do? They started restricting access to the polls passing voter suppression laws all across this country and denying people their right to vote. We have to make sure Yelling that to my right. elections are able to be conducted so that voters have a chance to maximize their access to the polls. And that's what Dem Democrats stand for. We will continue to fight for every vote. And lastly, we are
lastly, let's, I, want to, I really want to close on a high note. I am so proud of the Democratic Party and our support for making sure that we are more equal in America. Today, with Barack Obama as president, with the support of Democrats, we live in a more equal America. The Supreme Court has finally made sure that love is love. It's the law of the land. That is a reference to uh, Supreme Court ruling that is in favor of uh, gay marriage. And let me just say, we're going to continue to push for the kind of equality that every American deserves. I'm so proud of the Black Lives Matter movement because the changes in policy that we need to ensure that no matter what your skin color, what your, your skin color is, what your background is, that everyone has the ability to be treated fairly and equally and not live in fear. Policy needs to change. I'm proud of the young people who have been pushing that Black Lives Matter movement. We brought the Confederate flag down. We've made sure that symbols of hate, symbols of hate are unacceptable in America, but now we need to move forward even more. What we don't need is immigration policy like that that has been spewed by the hateful comments of Republican candidates for, pre for president. Donald Trump, it's appalling and unacceptable that he would refer to Mexicans as rapists and killers instead of people who just want to come here to make a better way of life for themselves and their families. And then I can't even use the vulgar term that he has used and that Jeb Bush has doubled down on and many of those Republican candidates have, have called children of immigrants who are not the vulgar word that they've used, but are citizens. Citizens. This week there has been a debate on the Republican side over whether to deny or take away citizenship from babies born in this country under the 14th Amendment who all have legal constitutional citizenship. That is what the Democratic Party stands for. Equality, equality of opportunity, making sure that we can support the cornerstones of a middle class life. That's what you'll get from a Democratic president. And I will work every single day along with so many of you to make sure that the Democratic nominee for president is elected, the 45th president of the United States. And we will do it on the shoulders of Iowa voters like we have for many, many elections. to give you a look over the crowd at those, over at the edge, they're yelling for debates, meaning more more Democratic bar Party debates, and all candidates included. If you need to go in front of me, go ahead. Again, that was Democratic Party Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Now we're going to wait a few minutes for uh, one of the Republicans to come out. As some people will filter out, others will come into the area. Hey, uh. <laughs> I'm just going to keep this alive. Give you a look at the changing crowd. There is a 
two of guys at the front there sticking signs in the hay that is in front of the stage. I think I picked a good day to come out here. I almost thought about coming out here Wednesday, but then I had to wait for someone who was going to pick up something from me. So I, I waited for her. Then I thought when I saw that there were before here today, yep, this is the day I use that free ticket. Well, let's see what are y'all saying. Yep, thanks. Thanks for putting me up. Yes. There are, there were hecklers, some Republicans, but they were drowned out by those people who want the Democratic Party to allow, or more specifically Hillary Clinton, to go for more debates, and all candidates included, and... Uh, well, they were, they were making their uh, opinions known. But I think there will definitely be some uh, activity during the next two speeches by uh, Chris Christie and uh, Bobby Jindal. There's an announcement from the main uh, PA system here at the fairgrounds. But mm -hmm. It's muffled, it's bouncing off the buildings, so just I'm just ignoring that. Yeah, Chris Christie signs are now adorning the hay bales in front of the stage. And some of his uh, campaign volunteers are also here wearing their uh, navy blue shirts. give a shout out to uh, Global Occupy News Network and any other channels that might be streaming my feed today. They're doing good work. They need the support. And uh, I would like to do more home broadcasting, but uh, I just don't have the setup. And right now I can't afford to get a better computer yet, but one day I hope to so I can do more broadcasting at home and give the other producers a break. Uh, right now, I just can't cut it. I try, I die, you know. So I stream, and uh, while I'm waiting, while we're waiting for Chris Christie to come out, uh, please check out my uh, donation sites: uh, GoFundMe.com slash Occupy That's K-A-Y-L-Y-N-N. Again, www.gofundme.com slash occupier Kaylin. Or if you do not have access to GoFundMe or you do not use one of the currencies that it supports, you can go through PayPal at www.paypal.com and then the send money to line, enter the email address strainsop at aol.com. 
Again, www.paypal.com. And then send money to line. Enter the email address strainsop at aol.com. That will help me cover the cost of my live streaming and broadcasting so I can continue to bring you these events live and uh, unedited, totally raw. I don't get any support from any group whatsoever, at least not financially. I get tips on events that I go stream and some from different groups. Like yesterday, I streamed a vigil at the mosque that I belong to, you know, honoring the deaths of the 500 plus children who were killed by the Israeli military last year in Gaza. So that's what I did. So I do things like that, and uh, I eat data big time. I, I'm sacrificing to have a big data plan so I can do this because I cannot get solid Wi-Fi, especially in a place like here at the fairgrounds. But you know, I do it for you. And more people are uh, filtering out, coming in. Seating here is really not that much, so a lot of people have to stand. And there's a lot of media here. There's that platform, several cameras. There's one behind me. There's another one. To, another one to my left. There's a couple there, and there's one in front with the umbrella over it. I just found a spot in front of a hay bale that I can lean on. It is so nice to not have typical state fair heat oh my God. that we used to be known for. Correct. It's a good thing you weren't here last Saturday uh, and Sunday. Yeah, I, I had other things to do last, oh, last weekend, so I couldn't come okay. out. That was a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can I cannot be in two places at once. <laughs> no, no, no. Where 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 were you following the candidates? Uh, actually, I last Saturday I was streaming at the Capitol. Oh, okay. So is this your first trip to Iowa? Uh, no, I've i I'm a local. I'm a I'm a local. All right, you know your way around. Oh yeah. <laughs> When I get out of here, I'll hop that bus and go back home to my kitty. I'm not sure what the actual break time in between speeches is. But I'm going to keep it live. Um, so thanks for... Uh, yeah, yeah, my audio, that might be because of the signal here. I do apologize that for that. I think what I might do is I might go down and come back up and see if that helps. So give me a few minutes to uh, restart my stream and then... Uh, We'll see if that fixes it.